Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan with a really smart trailer. If you're looking for that big fifth wheel living space, but maybe you still punch a clock for a living, you're gonna like this one. It's the 26RL Alpha Wolf. And it has those dual living room super slides and island kitchen like you find in a big luxury full-timer fifth wheel, but wrapped up into something that is far more accessible for people like me that are still working for a living. You know, Mr. Halet would be in the luxury fifth wheel. Me, uh, I'm still just slinging cameras around here. I'd, I'd be more into something like this. And it gives us that nice space where you can get in. It, it's got a light, br uh, bright color palette. You can kick back, relax, have a great time here. It's got a, a solid extended season package with an enclosed heated underbelly. Also has a really cool uh, battery tending solar package that's a little bit expandable if you're interested. I'll touch on that a little bit as we go here. But where this one really shines is it nails all the things that you're going to use, see, feel, want, and need on a daily basis without paying for and towing all that extra fluff stuff that just adds a lot of weight and cost. It's a really, I call it smarter class kind of, uh, maybe lighter weight RV. I don't know if it's a true ultralight, but I don't know that it's not either because with dual super slides, only 7,000 pounds dry weight, that is not too bad. I do want to address though, while we're talking the weight of this, you hear 7,000 pounds, you're sort of thinking, hmm, I wonder if my half ton could handle that. It's not so much as the weight on this one that gives me pause. There are some half tons I think could work for this. I think a lot of people with a three quarter would feel it more comfortable towing because it is tip to tail about 34 feet long and a couple inches from the uh, tip of the tongue to the back of that bumper. It's got a decent amount of length. So it could bully around a lighter duty truck pretty easily. But the other option that you have here, and this is actually kind of good to know whether you, know, you could live in Washington state and we are over here in Michigan. You don't got to have a tow vehicle. We can just deliver this thing straight to your front door or your campsite. Give us a call. We'll get you a quote on that stuff. Easy peasy. And this is what I mean when I say like fifth wheel living space. If you look at a big luxury fifth wheel like uh, like a big Montana or a North Point or an Eagle or a Cougar or something like that, you find this living room from like every single manufacturer. It gives us huge amounts of space and the window coverage. Yes. All of these windows over here on the door side of the RV, giving you the perfect opportunity, kind of like we're doing off the rear window here, although the sun's glaring us out, to, uh, I don't know, peek at the neighbors? <laughs> but you're enjoying the looks over your campsite, not the neighbors. And this is a dual power awning setup, so you can uh, maintain the windows uh, behind you for breeze uh, purposes when you get to your destination. We're going to come back to the windows in a second. I want to point out something on that table. Notice how the tabletop itself has that kind of like simulated live edge. Personally, I think it's just kind of smexy looking. Hello, Mr. Fawcett. How you doing there? The other thing I thought about is it doesn't have near the sharp edge to grind into your forearms and your wrists while you're sitting there eating or playing a game or something like that. I swear, is it just me or I swear restaurants are making more and more uncomfortable uh, seating in their facilities so that you leave quicker? Is that a thing? It feels like that's kind of a subconscious thing a manufacturer would do. Now the theater seat over here, that is one of the things where you step up uh, into an alpha that you don't find typically in a stick and tin Cherokee. You do kind of move up a step here and get some uh, nicer furniture fixtures like that big center armrest console in that thing. Now it's not really cuddle compliant as a uh, regular Halo RV viewer, Mitcher, uh, Mr. Richard Vale might say, but that's where we got the uh, the height of bed in the back right here. That sucker, you want to snuggle up to your partner. Uh, you know, you got the perfect little place to do it where you don't have any sort of dividers in there. My wife, all about the theater seat. She wants me to get away from her. <laughs> <laughs> little glimpse into my life there. But to be fair, I am rather smothery. Now you saw the height of bed right there. You also got to see the zebra shades. What they're going to allow you to do is get as much or as little light through here as you want, depending on how you roll them down and, and line up the panels. I thought kind of cutting away like that instead of rolling them live on video might be a nice way. Some people are sensitive to light flashing. I don't want to give you like an epileptic seizure, and I also don't want to give you a headache or anything like that. Um, the, uh, let's, the, the living room area over here. The main floor deck is completely carpetless. The slide out is carpeted. Some folks really like a carpetless slide, especially in the dining area for easy clean purposes. Some people actually still like a carpeted slide floor so that you can, it just feels a little warmer and a little cozy on your toesies. You know what I mean? Technical term right there. <clears throat> um, and I'm, I'm just eyeballing it here. I don't remember Alpha Wolves having 
quite this much light coverage, but it is lighter and brighter in here than I imagined. Maybe I'm just remembering this incorrectly, but in previous years, I really felt like you had to have the windows open to get some good light in here, and I don't feel that uh, anymore, although the windows are very, very nice. Um, now, directly across from the uh, theater seat over here, you've got that electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster. Uh, you've got wide open entertainment, too. Now, you see the entertainment can, has like all sorts of storage cabinetry behind it. The RV does not include a factory TV, and I'm okay with that, and I'll tell you why. You can option a TV into this thing, but it's just a plain TV, you know? If you're just going to live off the park cable or something, eh, that'd be fine. Maybe you got decent over-the-air signal, the old rabbit ear style, you know, where you're camping at. You'll, you'll be fine. I like to stream my media. Now, when I go camping, I personally camp in a no-slide bunkhouse. We don't even bring a television, but if I was in a dual super slide living room like this alpha wolf right here my, logically i think i'm spending more time in the rv and the tv becomes a more important fixture i would like to probably put a smart tv in this instead of just a common <laughs> dumb tv <laughs> but uh you, you get the idea obviously you don't tend to get those from the factory so i would rather not spend money on a factory tv have the opportunity to go out and pick out the screen that i want or frankly there's a bunch of people that just have extra screens lying around their house i've got a small tote in my basement with like two or three different little screens that i could put in this thing and call it macaroni and be good all day or i could update to a nice smart tv and keep on top of my rick and morty or whatever i'm watching i watched I watch garbage TV, by the way. I watch the kind of TV that my wife goes, oh, not this. Can you watch this later after I go to bed? <laughs> it's part of the reason I stay up late. And I always got bags under my eyes. Now, a couple things. You may notice over here, and you may have noticed through the super slide, the, like, the windows behind you open for airflow. The seat side windows do not. And I didn't want to try to do something shifty. Like, pull those shades down over them so that, like, maybe somebody didn't notice and we sucker you into buying them. I don't mind pointing out where RVs are excellent and maybe where they're not excellent for you. Because this is a uh, this is an RV. It, it's, it checks the boxes. It does a lot of things very, very well. But it's never over the top. Like I said, it's still, it's something made for Larry Lunchbucket and Jane Sixpack. People who still work for a living. That's who, like, Alpha Wolf is for right here. And I want you to have the clearest idea of what you're getting into. I want you to buy your second RV the first time from us over here at Halo RV. And sometimes that needs means pointing out where something isn't always amazing. Like you see that you've got all this uh, optional use accent lighting because I didn't have it on before. I call it bug zapper lighting because that is exactly the shade of blue that I see coming off of a bug zapper right there. And maybe you love it. Maybe you don't. If you don't love it, leave it turned off or replace it with some other color. Uh, I tell you, one of those like multicolor strobe pattern light things would be pretty darn cool right there. Now, looking through all the storage over here, this thing has a big pantry. Holy cow, man. Um, and next to that, in our little kind of kitchen cooking hutch over here, uh, there, there is a full extension door. I only have popped partially open, but look at that countertop, or, or, or rather cutting board right there, how I have it beside the stove. That is something I think works really well as a makeshift side splash. Since for some reason, RV designers seem to think the grease only goes backwards and not sideways. <laughs> now, the island, it's, it's super asymmetrical. But what I love about that is that it means uh, when that big black stainless farm sink is in use, you, uh, you don't lose out on like a good chunk of counter space. And that also means that they had room for all kinds of drawer space and a huge wastebasket space below that. Maybe it's not always the fanciest in some ways. I would argue that this is as functional as anything else you're going to run into. And one of the things I think is really an unsung hero on this floor plan is that big chunk of like counter prep space over here. And I love the placement of the microwave in this. I It, it just makes sense to me. I love being able to pull something out of the microwave and having a big chunk of counter space down below to set it down so you don't burn your fingers or whatever. Little things like that sometimes. You don't even realize how good and smart and useful it is until you don't have them or you're actually using it. I also want to point out, uh, you didn't see me open the left-hand door because that's not storage. Uh, it's actually screwed shut at the top and bottom because that is like an access point to things like your furnace down in there. So uh, just pointing out a couple little details like that. Normally, 
I get all kinds of uppity in my videos about the fact that this RV does not have a shade in the entry door, although it's got a full window. I don't mind it here, though, because directly across from that door, I don't really feel like there's, you know, any privacy concerns because all they're looking at is your thermostat. Maybe, I don't know, maybe like, wow, they really keep it cold in their camper. I, I guess if that's somebody needs to know it that bad, I, I just tell them. doesn't bother me. Now, you see the little blue orb at the bottom of this control panel? Huh? Awesome little motion activated sucker right there. By the way, this is also where, you know, your, uh, your accent lights over the slides are activated. Outside awning lights or ceiling lights are all right here on one switch. All of this stuff can also be operated remotely straight off your phone uh, via the uh, LCI One Control app. I don't know. Just a, a, a couple cool things there for you to, to utilize. But just like I did right there, you don't have to go R2-D2 Bluetooth mode on this thing. You can just push the buttons, which is something I excel at doing with my wife every single day till death do us part, hon. <laughs> Now, just to help you get your bearings, since we're kind of David Blaine teleporting over here, we're moving up into the bathroom space from the entry door, which is nice, because as you'll see in a few minutes, I'll actually close the slides and show you this thing in road mode, give you a good look at everything. That's a porcelain bowl, foot flush stool, which is nice, with some pretty good room around it. It's slanted a little bit right justified, but one of the things that I think is really cool is when the door closes, you gain, like there's this little notch right here, and somehow it just really lined up with at least my elbow where uh, pretending to, you know, do what you need to do in a bathroom. I felt like I had plenty of room in here. And speaking of plenty of room, this is something that varies, but I've always felt like I had plenty of room in these uh, tall radius showers. Some people are really not a fan of them. M maybe, I don't know, maybe I just fit them okay. Like I'm, I, I need to have my head in that skylight but I've always felt like I have a, a decent enough headroom in here. But then again, with no hair, I, it ain't exactly like I, I got to spend a lot of time, you know, <laughs> soaping up up there. <laughs> I just had a thought as I was moving around here, too. This big blank wall above the toilet. Is it just me? That is like begging for a couple of towel hooks or towel bar. What do you prefer, actually? A towel bar or a towel hook? For some reason, towel bar feels nicer to me, but... I don't know, a towel bar maybe seems like it could be a little bit more effective. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. Great linen space in here. Plenty of room for our toiletries. Storage uh, below the sink. Not full because you got your plumbing down there. I'm at a bad angle to try to showcase that. But you can get a small wastebasket down there. And that is a big sink. Now, interesting thing here. That is a little motion sensor kind of nightlight thing. It has nothing to do with the ceiling lights up here. So, uh, you know, you can run these completely independently of not just one another, but also that motion light. And I, I will say, I think there is some validity to the argument. Some people say when they're sitting on the toilet, this is basically your view. Having that light bright, right in your eyes, maybe not your very favorite thing you've ever encountered. Yeah, I think that's fair. I can acknowledge that. Big, tall viewing window over here. Notice I said viewing in that breeze window. Again, just trying to make sure everybody understands exactly what they're getting here. And I didn't talk about this in the living room, but you see those household and USB outlets right there? You're going to see some more of those on the other side of this camp queen. Uh, I mean, where you sit in the living room, both sides of the sofa, there's household and USB outlets. You can always have stuff plugged in, charged up, uh, good to go, basically, in this one. Now, the, uh, the bedroom... They didn't make it any larger than it had to be. Uh, it it is definitely pretty. I'll say cozy up here, but I'm spending. I'm buying this RV because I want to spend my time in the living room. I'm not buying this because I I, I want to just hang out here in the bedroom. And if what you're looking for is a bedroom slide, we've got plenty of other things with similar floor plans to this with a bed slide that we can set you up with from Halo RV. And now flipping around, I've also closed the slide outs to show you how things work in road mode. We're obviously up here in the bedroom. The bathroom is accessible two ways with the slides closed. So we are definitely uh, what is scientifically known as nap and crap compliant. That's your Uncle Josh, the RV nerd. But uh, you, you're not getting too much of anything in the living room with the slides closed. And I know that's probably a significant downfall for a lot of people. 
But that's one of the reasons. That's really the reason that I said I think this model, especially with the opposing slides in the living room, it's really best served at a destination. Uh, not, not so much for getting there. But Uncle Josh has got a little idea for you over here. You see how that slide is only partially open? That's, I don't know, maybe only six inches. If you can find a parking space where you can crack that slide open only a couple inches, which considering this has the fold down stable steps, you should pretty much, if you can open the steps, you should pretty much be able to open this slide out. You can get in here and I'm showing you how I'm doing it and I'm doing it backwards like Ginger Rogers. Everyone always thought Fred Astaire was such a good dancer. Ginger Rogers did everything Fred Astaire did and she did it backwards and in heels. Respect, for real. Anyway, my Uncle Gary showed me how hard it is to dance in heels, but that's a different story for a different day. If you do that, I've not opened the kitchen slide whatsoever. You can get in here. You can open the refrigerator completely. And this is a cable driven slide system. They're incredibly lightweight. And one of the benefits of them is like a rack and pinion slide, you can open them partially and not screw the system up. Like a Schwintech slide, you either want it all the way open or all the way closed. Cable driven slides or rack and pinion slides, if you wanna only do it a couple inches at a time, it doesn't screw anything up. Now, you should not be using the slide when it's only partially deployed, nor should you be doing this like if it's a driving rain outside because the slide's not totally normally sealed. Uh, the, uh, 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 the bulb seals are not engaged and the wipers may not have fully wiped in or out. Sorry, I couldn't remember the word bulb there for a minute. And I know it's subjective. I just don't think there's any denying it. These have such an attractive look about them. You know, when you start saying something is made for Larry Lunchbucket and Jane Sixpack, sometimes you feel like, well, am I settling? Am I, am I making accommodation? I don't think so. I think this is something you can feel really proud towing around. You pull in, you're gonna see a lot of people turning heads. It has that kind of look and eye appeal to it. Now, uh, up front here, a couple other things. I love the slam latches and the magnet holdbacks just making it easy to get in and out of here. You see you got the drunken uncle leash latch right next to that. And then down in here, look at how nicely finished off that is. I, frankly, when I open that baggage door, I almost expect to see just like raw exposed wood studs, but you don't see any of that here. It just looks so good and so clean. Just like we saw in the bathroom, that handy little motion light right there gives you just enough light in the evening hours to see what you're doing. The, if I'm going to be ultra picky, I wish the battery disconnect was mounted uh, up higher on that wall rather than lower. I just feel like maybe it's a little susceptible to cargo shifting, but all of our Alpha Wolf customers at Halo RV, we've never once had that reported. And these tend to be, I don't know what, it's like certain campers seem to attract uh, very similar owners. We, the people who buy Alphas from us, they tend to be people who tow and go a lot. Even with a floor plane like this that I think is very good at a destination, they tend to move it around with frequency. And we don't have people calling us saying, hey, uh, my battery disconnect broke or anything like that. Now, giving you a look at the uh, awning space over here, because this, again, does have that dual power awning setup. That is just awesome for really, really maximizing our, uh, our, our total just kind of fun space, the patio space over here. Uh, now that entry door is anti-slam. You can also see how it obviously has that smoky glass front on it, which from the outside, you maintain full privacy. And again, that door might not have a shade, but I don't know that that one really bothers me because again, all you're staring at is just the thermostat. Now, I think what's happening here, those white speakers stuck out at me like a sore thumb. And I was like, hmm, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Now, when I stand back and I look at it from the angle of the nose cap, the white nose cap and the white speaker covers, I don't know, they kind of work for me. But sitting here on its own, the white speakers feel a little bit out of the ordinary. That being said, I believe, kind of like the lack of rear ladder on this, that is just uh, currently a symptom of an industry shortage. I think it is very, very likely and, and more, more likely than not that uh, 
future copies of this will probably roll in here with black speakers. So if that's an absolute, oh man, I don't like that. Give our team a call. Chances are we can look into that and, you know, we'll, we'll go out. Uh, your salesperson can take a picture of the one on the lot. Make sure it has the color of speakers you want, you know. Little things like that again, though, that's an issue of screwdriver work. I'm sure if it had white speakers and you're like, no, 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 I really, really want the, the black ones. That's the kind of things we can switch around for you. Not a big deal. Now, the uh, cargo rack on the back is an awesome option we like to apply to these. It's got a 200-pound limit. That's before the spare tire is mounted. And by the way, you don't have to peel the spare tire off to drop that. Up top, you see the LCI Insight Bluetooth backup camera for helping you make sure that you don't bash that rear cargo rack into anything when you get to your destination. Um, and uh, notice that baggage door in the face of the slide right there. Just like your uh, baggage doors, we have the same slam latches, same magnet holdbacks. Alpha is actually really good for consistency on that. And I love that the space behind the fireplace just, it didn't go to waste. You know, there's a lot of times you don't realize in a lot of RVs that space is completely unutilized. And there are some manufacturers who will give us an outside baggage door that goes like all the way up to the ceiling of the slide and you can't get to it. This only goes like, I'm touching the top of the slide right now just to kind of give you a reference point right there. You can actually see where it left a mark on my arm. So it goes up in there, maybe about a foot, but not terrible. Um, as we uh, back up here, something I want to mention is that this is slide awning ready should you choose to add a little extra protection to her. We have a full outside utility shower and black flush right there. Um, also, the uh, underbelly of this, uh, as compared to uh, a common, say, stick and tin Cherokee, which has enclosed holding tanks, this has a fully enclosed underbelly that is also forced air heated. Now I want to offer a little extra note to something. I realized I kind of cruised past it. I mentioned a ladder shortage. Normally, we would option this camper right here with a ladder from the factory at Haylet RV. Unfortunately, they're just not available in the marketplace right now. What is nice though, is that Alpha has left their, uh, their ladder prep in the rear wall. Some manufacturers have actually removed it. So if you love everything about this RV, but if you're like no ladder, no sale, no problem. Give our team a call. We can uh, get a schematic from Alpha, find out where the mounts are located. We can either provide you with that schematic and you can apply a ladder yourself, or you can just ask us to do it and we can have it all wrapped into one final tag for you. Whatever you need, you let our team know, we'll make it happen. So thank you very much for joining us today. Let me know what are like your top one or two favorite features and what are one or two things you'd like to see change. I always like hearing it both ways. Uh, short of that, I leave you a link in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability. And as always, Family owned and operated, we don't do hidden dealer fees. We'd love to work with you when you're ready in return for our efforts here today. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Remember to subscribe, everyone.